come to Fun Fish and you don't eat the fish, I question why. Welcome aboard, everyone. Prince the Bear here, and somewhere beyond these doors, out in that water out there, we're gonna go catch a flying fish. And try their new seafood-centric menu, I suppose. So we're just going to rest all right, like normal. Come along with us and let's see what weird dishes we can get today. Be sure to stay under 20,000 leagues. You heard the girl. More than the three items that were announced on the Disney Parks blog have changed on this menu. New vegan app that replaced a different one. The old vegan app is now no longer vegan. There's a new seafood. And the lobster enhancement is now an appetizer. And I think he said there was another new um, appetizer on here as well. The Shrimp cocktail has changed. That's what it is. And now it's time for the hand cleaning. A little tablet and some rose water. It's gonna expand. Hello. This is the way. It's so cute. Adorbs. Oh, and not like super hot either. Like you would expect when you go to like a Moroccan restaurant, but like, the water's like super warm. This is just like temp. It's nice, I like it. I feel clean. I am fresh and clean. This is one of those little things that never gets old. It's like a chia pet, a hand sanitation. And not sped up for late night infomercials. I don't know what that is. That's where we are. Smells like rose water, but not like overpowered. Not like you're gonna, it's not like you, Wash your hands with like dollar store soap. I'm not wrong, dollar store soap. It's a job done. I definitely refill my bottles in the house with dollar store soap. But it's got like a elevated fragrance to it. You'll feel clean afterwards. But not like you're trying to hide something like that. You know what I mean? Get in between the fingernails, dudes. Clean fingernails for all my men. My day thems. And the, and the cheese as well. It's important. So here we have the blood orange margarita. It's looking blood orangey in one of those average bar cups. Light, citrus, not too orange. I really like this. I won't give it a four out of five oranges. This is the, the juice. It's got the juice. It's my new main squeeze. I wonder how many blood oranges had to be sacrificed to make this sacrificial drink. But it tastes good. Ooh. This is in fact delicious. I got the shower in this. The cup though, this base, one of those abracadabra bar bases. If you feel like I need to hold this with two hands, I can spill it. Like I'm back to Sippy Cup stage. I haven't had my drink yet. I feel like the princess ordered the better drink. There's a right balance of like sweet and sour and citrus. I need to try more blood orange barbies. Hmm. 4.25 out of 5. A little bit too much salt. Though. This is Bear's old fashioned but a vegan Woodford Reserve. That's a slow sipper. I don't know how I feel about that. Even for like usual like bourbon forward drinks. I think this is my top three. But I will give it like a 3.75 out of 5. Whiskey is it's deep. It's just, you know, not my favorite. We've come so far on this channel in five years of this, and I don't really understand how I ended up wearing so many old fashioned. I feel like it's the princess's fault. I'm sure that some of you can tell me who's what it was. I feel like I order old fashioned more than 50% of the time now. Especially if they're on the menu. Uh, 
You know what? I think I'm gonna call this a health food drink. It's healthy. It's just bourbon, bitters, and a simple syrup. It's sugary. Not as sugary as some of the other cocktails I get on the menu. Actually, this is a win. It's quite good. They call this your signature cocktail, but what I'm noticing, given some of the other restaurants on property, is like, I've got no stamped ice cube. Now that I'm complaining, I don't need it, it's gonna melt you away. No unique flavors, it's just a very simple, very well done old fashioned. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's classic, classic, by the sea. Four out of five. This is their gorgeous potato bread. Now they do, it seasoned beautifully. They do not have earth balance here. They only have oil. So I opted out of the oil. I'm just gonna eat the bread. I'm just gonna have the one slice. I'm not trying to gorge myself on bread. I got lots of food to eat. It's tasty. It's very light on like the, the inner. I thought the seasoning flavoring would be a little bit more prominent, but it's not. It just, evenly balanced and tasty. I like the bread. It gives good bread. I'm gonna give it a four out of five breads. It's good and messy. Everybody comes here for the bread reveal. That's the real reason you guys come on these videos. You don't care about us. You just want the bread. And I get it. We like bread too. These nice, warm, ooh. You know these are made in house. Fresh, hot even. Like, burn your fingers while hot almost. Oh, it's got a nice potato bread smell. There's some greens and herbs in here. And it comes with a chive little spread of butter. Which makes you sad the princess can't have any. She would love like a chive earth balance. I'm gonna give it a nice little spread here. Not too crazy. I wanna live. We've got sea salt, we've got truffle butter, we've got all sorts of Never a chai butter, and I feel like it's been too long. That is the perfect little spread for this nice warm house made bread. I'm impressed. As the princess says, it gives good bread. Three and a half out of five plus. I'm excited for this new salad, even though I feel like it's another one of those salads that you have to like cut yourself, right? Well, I guess you don't really have to. You can just fork it all together. We've got this sauce, we got this watercress here, we got these breads, and I'm grabbing another tomato. I think this is a nice full bite. If it wasn't for the oil mixture on top of these tomatoes, It'll be whole oh, hump. Huh. But because of the way that they season this, this is super tasty. I do wish there was a little bit more bread. I'm gonna give it minus points for that because I think that crunch really helps bring everything together. And there isn't enough to be able to eat with the crunch in every bite. But I'm gonna give it a 3.25 out of five. Salads, it does toss my salad, but only in the single tomato sense form and not in like the I want to toss all my salads in this type form. It's just adventurous and drippy. Give it up for the theming in flying fish from the door handles outside with the shape like fish to the scales and the silverware to the water bubbles in the ceiling. This place takes its theming very seriously. I think more seriously than Citrus, which is still some sort of light Mary Poppins inspired. This feels like elevated under the sea. As for this salad, a nice, beautiful plating, a little greens here. Tomato salads are always weird salads because, like, they just completely forego the greens. This is basically garnish and not so much leaves. Which I have. A wide variety of colors in here. We get it all up in the sauce because we like out of sauce. 
It's very like sort of like nutty dressing. But it bounces up like that extreme citrus you get with like tomato salads. So it's like a you are like tartness of the citrus, but it's also semi-sweet. Look at that sweetness when tomatoes. Which I really like. It's not a huge portion of salad, but this is fine dining. You come for the views, both outside the food, and the flavors. And the flavors are definitely there. 3.75 out of 5. You'll look at the menu, if you've been here before, and you'll think that the octopus moved from the enhancement sections to the entree, or the appetizer section. However, this Spanish octopus is actually a dish that they had before the panty. So before the parks closed, the restaurant closed, due to the uh, global issue we were all dealing with. Uh, and it's returned, it's sort of a new style. The enhancement octopus was almost anime tentacle level octopus huge wrap around the plate and the uh, seafood pro pasta I got last time. This thing uh, is diminutive by comparison. Well, that's a bad thing. That huge octopus is a lot for somebody that doesn't eat octopus all the time. This is beautiful patty. You got a little inklings of sauce here. You get three nicely roasted octopus and this uh, like miso right here in the middle. Miso salad as well. So think about it more of like an octopus salad, more than just like charred octopus. Like I used to get at Tiffin's, like you see uh, in the video that we did here last time. It's an interesting display. Let's go ahead and get a tentacle. Tentacle, if you will. Let's get some of this miso salad here in the middle. We're gonna dip in just a tiny bit of the sauce here. A full bite for the first bite. It's a lightly charred octopus, it's still got that flavor to it. A little bit of crunch to it. Even with the salad. It's got a nice, nice skin in the octopus. The sauce pairs well. It almost feels like a, it's like a mustard based sauce. I don't think it's mustard, but it's like a mustard based sauce. It's a good flavor. It makes me miss the old I like that thing. That was thing the dreams you made of. This is a nice appetizer. One of the best items on our property, but still very, very good. We're gonna give it three out of five points. Apparently the princess is speed running appetizers now. It was good. Really? This is the way. Take your extra watermelon salad innards and put them on your bread. And, yeah, sorry. Tomato salad. I'm so used to watermelon. Tomato salad. It's like a pesto on your bread. It's amazing. This is the way. We revisit this lovely breaded tofu dish, and I swear to you guys, this, this tofu has gotten like way smaller. This is like a quarter of a block of tofu now, and it's forty dollars for this plate. Four zero doll hairs for this fancy AF tofu plate. I'm gonna grab some of these sauces. Grab some of this inner since the salsa is like the m m I'm more of this than anything else on this dish. There you go. Cheers. Really good. Really good. Forty dollars good. Maybe like $20 good, but tasty. When did we come into a world where vegan food is equal to and or more expensive than Omni food? I don't like that. I miss the days when my plate was like half the price of theirs. Now $40 for this? I should have at least a whole freaking block of tofu. A whole block. Three out of five tofu. It's really good, but I can rip it off. I see this plate. I get flashbacks to the review that I gave here last time. We love Flying Fish. It's a beautiful restaurant. Staff, servers, cooks, hostesses, managers, all fantastic. It's a very sweet people. Um, but it felt like last time like 
the entree and the appetizer for like doubling down on the salad. Because it's basically salad with a couple things of tofu. Now, I do see the love and care they put in this tofu because this is beautifully cooked down with the herbs and everything on top. The colors on the salad, the way that it's plated, probably most of what you're paying for. When it comes to scenic dining at Disney, I never thought I'd be the one to say this, but it's more about the atmosphere than the actual amount of food that you're getting. I'm not coming to Signature Dining to get full. It's not like, person, it's not a buffet. If I want to leave, like, dying, I'll be like Tusker House or Beer Garden. That's where I want to leave hurting. There's where the value is. But the value in this is a fine dining setting. And getting something like this, when all your other friends are eating their Omni foods, it feels elevated. What we care about here is flavor. You just have the value for yourself. No, you don't need the knife, but I feel like being fancy. These huge stalks of asparagus. It's corn salsa in the middle. Very colorful, very tropical vibes is what I get from it. Just load that up on the fork. Spilling as much as I can along the way. There we go. Those flavors. The tofu. It's very Spanish inspired. It's definitely giving you like those deep, rich herb flavors. The salsa pairs nice with the tofu. The tofu is cooked better than I think 80% of the places on property cook tofu. It's well seasoned all the way through. The texture is good. I just wish there was more of the tofu. And not even like a whole block of tofu. I just feel like the tofu, the amount of tofu on the plate, is out of balance with the number of veggies. You have these huge pieces of cauliflower here on the backside. Salsa, three asparagus. The amount of tofu, at least double. Uh, I don't know if I expect a whole block, but double the very least. Because you'll definitely run out of tofu long before you get the rest of this dish. And that may be my only gripe with it. Though. Three out of five. We go to a lot of the restaurants on Disney property, and it's like, why did you order the steak? Or not, why did you order the chicken or the fish, not the steak? Which is what most people expect, the steak and eggs people. Steak and vegetable people. You come to find fish and you don't eat the fish, I question why. There is a New York script on the menu. Uh, the seafood pearl pasta that I got last time was gone. The red snapper potato wrap is still here. But this is a return of the Chilean sea batch, which is another menu item that was on the menu previous to the penny that is now returned. Redone, restyled. So this time we have a nice little piece of the Chilean sea bash topped in a blue crab herb with a lemongrass sauce in the bottom and then bok choy. This is going to be interesting. Those are a lot of flavors. I'm not sure if they go together, but I trust the culinary hand here most times. Where to start? Let's start over here. Cut into that. Nice flaky blue crab. Decent chopped pieces of bok choy. I feel like anytime we get bok choy in any other place, it's huge mounds of bok choy. Like how could I possibly fit that in our mouth bok choy? These are very well sized. We'll get that up on there with some of the peppers in the sauce and the bok choy. We're gonna have it some mouthful. Tire mouth. I like how they serve the bok choy at the bottom. It's soaked into the lemongrass sauce. Because you bite into it and it's just filled with the flavor of that sauce. And you get the bok choy. Bok choy absorbs flavors really well, but doesn't really taste like a whole lot on its own. So I appreciate that they've sort of imbued the flavor into the bok choy. And the lemongrass sauce basically acts the same as you would like squeeze a lemon over a fish. So it helps balance out that oceanness that you get from both crab, which is a very strong flavor, and the Chilean sea bass. As long as that sear on top, that is a flavor explosion. A tsunami, if you will. I quite like it. Do I like it as much as the seafood pasta that I had last time? Debatable. But this is still a really good dish. 
you will not be disappointed. Four out of five. And our server suggestion, I got a pomegranate margarita or pomegranate martini. Not bad. Light in the vodka, forward on the pomegranate. It's not too harsh. I like this. This is a four out of five martinis. I should have got this first. Is it shaken or stirred? I have no idea. Came in the shakers, I'm assuming shaken. You, some of you James Bond aficionados have to explain the difference in the comments. Culture me a little bit. Uh, really? It's a nice color to it. Never been the one to order a Every now and then I get in the mood, but it's very, very rare. Ooh. It's very simple. We're going with sweet side, not really expecting it. Um, kind of nice from the to it. It's strong with pomegranate, but in a good way. It's like pomegranate candy. It's like a pomegranate Jolly Rancher almost, but less sweet. Three and a half out of five. The trend in hazelnut desserts continues. So we have a hazelnut chocolate bar uh, with a caramel sauce and then an orange sorbet and a little teardrop. We got a little crumble on it as well. Uh, it's definitely a bar. Chock full of all the things. Very pretty construction. A little chocolate top. It almost looks like a like banister almost or something. Or maybe some weird roaming construction. I don't know. Uh, let's go ahead and combine everything and then we'll do it separately. Let's see, I guess I'm just gonna try to knife this with a spoon. Let's go to the style, smush it. As I get a finger full of the sorbet. Get that all well into the sauce. Look at that. Definitely bar like. I usually find hazelnut to be a really intense flavor. But the chocolate with the orange sorbet comes out very nice. You can feel like, um, you've ever had like citrus chocolate before? The citrus infused chocolate? It's something like that, but a little more smooth. It's a lot of different textures, but they actually work pretty well together. But if you're sensitive to texture, this one might be an issue. Because it's a soft move to crunch on the bottom. Crunchy chocolate and this super soft sorbet. It's a very wide variety of textures. The flavors are on point. I'm gonna do the, the hits in the bar by itself and then on the side. That top, that, mm, that top chocolate piece is very sharp. Stabbing the insides of the mouth. Definitely better with the sorbet than without. It's a decent dessert. Not as fancy as some others, but still pretty good. I give it three out of five. Here we have the Boardwalk Cafe. This is flying fish coffee with whiskey. Boardwalk coffee is tasty. The Boardwalk coffee is more tasty with whiskey. This is my jam. I love it. This is a much, I mean, the key lime dessert here is really good, but if you want something light, this is the way. This is a five out of five. Princess's item must get if you are a coffee lover. Bear's not drinking this though, so it's all me. Cheers. Flying fish, I think still is one of the best Signature dining, signature dining restaurant you can go on Disney property. We flew in, we sank down, and we enjoyed the dive? She ate off the sea floor. Hey. We know what you guys think. Obviously, there is a discussion to be had about the value of signature dining restaurants, especially for those of the plant-based community here on this channel. Uh, I wonder what you guys think. What do you think of the proliferation of plant-based food prices here in the last three or four years at Disney. 
have a discussion in the comments below. And we want to know, when do you treat yourself to signature dining? This is an every trip thing. This is it a special occasion thing? Is it a never thing? I need to hear from you guys, as always. So we're curious. Can, can we also say congratulations to Chef Tim? For getting promoted. We yes. will see you, Rivera, eventually. We'll hunt you down somewhere. If somebody see Chef Dino, you let us know somewhere too, because we don't yes. know where she went to. But Chef Tim, we appreciate you taking care of us at Flying Fish, and we are so happy that you got promoted. Yes. So if there's anything else you'd like to see us do, the comments is always a good place to find us. Hit that notification bell if you want to see other videos like this. And we have new videos five days a week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday. We will see you soon. Be sure to subscribe or Bear may go 3,000 leagues under the sea. Dive, dive, dive. I don't sleep with the fishes, but you heard the girl.